Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in, Andy here. Today I'm gonna to be taking a look at the Lenovo ThinkPad T490. So this is my personal T -pad, or ThinkPad T490 that I've been using for about the last month. Uh, I bought this for $700 on eBay. And so one of the reasons I'm decided to make a video on these, even though this is like a two-year-old laptop, these came out in 2018, is that they are starting to show up on eBay. So this may be a laptop that you're looking at if you're trying to save a few bucks and still get something that has some premium features and you know a more premium build quality. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. And I am gonna be comparing it some to a seventh generation X1 Carbon. So that's a 2018 uh, ThinkPad. Uh, that is the, the higher end thin and light model. This is a pretty thin and light, the T490 itself, and, and from certain angles you can actually see some interesting similarities between the two. So let's go ahead and talk about the T490, and like I said, we'll make some of those comparisons. So on the T490, the first thing that I'll go ahead and talk about, well, let's talk about the specs that I have. So like I said, I paid 700 bucks on the, on the dollar. Um, it was an open box model, so as you can see, it's in really good shape. It's in basically like new condition. I've been using it for a month. I didn't wipe down the bottom before I started filming. Uh, it does pick up fingerprints just like anything pad would. So this one has the i7-8665, which is... I'll go ahead and tilt the lid up so we can have that in the shot. But which is the... yeah, it's a 4-core, so it's, the, it's still an 8th gen. I think it's like the 8.5 gen sort of CPU from Intel. And they were stuck on those 8th gens for a long time, so that's why this still has that instead of it should have what would have been a 9th gen. Um, it has 16 gigs of RAM, or came with 16 gigs of RAM, because the T490 does give you the option. It has soldered RAM and then one RAM slot. So it came with 16 gigs of RAM. I've added another 16 gigs for 32 total. This one came with a 512 gig SSD. It's an SK Hynix model, so not like the highest end SSD that you'll get from Lenovo and the ThinkPads. A lot of times the X1s will come with Samsung SSDs that are basically the OEM equivalent to like a Samsung Evo, which is pretty sweet. Um, and then yeah, and then for the display, that's the other big spec item here. It does come with the Quad HD, the 1440p HDR display, which is pretty nice. It gets really bright. Um, it's supposed to be 500 nits. I don't have equipment to measure that, but it gets very bright and the colors on that look really nice. So those are the specs on it. And, and yeah, let's go ahead and dive into sort of breaking it down piece by piece and, and talk about how it stacks up. So I will talk right about the screen, sort of the last thing I was talking about on the specs. The screen on the T490 that I have, like I said, it's the HDR screen, so it's 1440p, which is plenty sharp. I had an X1 Carbon with a 4K HDR screen. There were some weird driver issues on that that I won't get into, um, but I couldn't really tell any sharpness difference, both 14-inch screens. So sharpness is great, 1440p at this size. Uh, the screen, the colors are, are really great. Um, they do look, sometimes the whites look a bit warm, like there's a bit of a yellow tint to the whites a little bit, but not too bad at all. And other colors, like when you're actually looking at photographs, um, or like impressive, like watching a movie or, or a really good video, that the colors look amazing. So I actually compared it to, at full brightness, my iPhone 11 Pro Max, which has, you know, the, the OLED screen. And, you know, Apple always sources great screens for their phones, or usually, I guess, there have been some issues on the iPhone 12. And it looks very comparable. So that's, to me, pretty impressive. So the screen on this is great. The only downside on the screen, no touch screen, which I don't care about, but some people do. Um, it is quite glossy as well. So even with the brightness cranked up, you can sometimes catch reflections of yourself in brightly lit areas. Uh, but fortunately, it does get really bright, so it's not too much of an issue. Okay, so build quality is an issue where I will compare it to the X1 Carbon. So overall, the build quality is very good. Everything feels really tightly put together. Um, one part actually about the, it being tightly put together, actually two that I'll mention specifically, or that the hinge for opening it actually feels almost like not too tight, not like it's like grinding, like there's a problem it's tight, but it's way tighter than you would normally get, even like a good laptop hinging, like an X1 Carbon. So the hinge is very tight. Um, and then also the bottom of it uses clips. I guess it's more plasticky than the bottom of the X1 Carbon. Uh, but the X1 Carbon, the bottom is very easy to remove if you want to like upgrade or swap out the SSD. This one only has five or six screws, 
Um, but man, it really clips on tight, so you have to get in there with a pry tool. Fortunately, I resisted the urge to use something metal, so I haven't scratched it, scratched it up yet. But it's, it's you can get in there to upgrade the RAM and the SSD, but man, it requires some some serious prying to get those clips loose. Uh, but once you get in, it's easy easy access to everything. But yeah, build quality, it's very sturdy, so there's no real flex on, not much flex on the screen. The keyboard deck is, of course, really sturdy, like you would expect from a ThinkPad. And yeah, so it's really all quite good on the build quality. The only area where it's a little bit of a letdown is if you're picking it up one-handed, which I know they say you shouldn't do on laptops, but you know, we're, we're all humans, so I do it sometimes. And there is a little bit more flex on it uh, than you would get on something like the X1 Carbon, which is very rigid, um, or even a lot of other laptops, like an XPS 13, um, or even some older T-Series ThinkPads, like a T420, which is a much thicker and heavier device, but a little more rigid. So that's the one area where the build quality isn't quite up to what I would expect from the ThinkPad T-Line. Oh, one last note on build quality is that it does, just like pretty much every other ThinkPad, uh, pick up fingerprints like crazy. So the finish on this one is not quite as soft as the X1 finish, but it's much closer to a soft touch finish than you got on a lot of older ThinkPads, which had a much sort of thicker, chunkier rubber, which actually didn't pick up the fingerprints quite as bad. So yeah, fingerprints are going to be an issue on this, just like they are on most ThinkPads. Okay, so port selection on the T490 is really good, um, or pretty good uh, for an ultra book these days. Uh, I guess it's two years old, so in the last few years. Um, and this is one of the main reasons that you might pick this over an X1 Carbon if you're looking at a couple year old ThinkPad, because in addition to you know the two USB ports, the HDMI port, the couple USB-Cs that you get on both of them, you also get a micro SD port, which is pretty cool if you are a photographer, you know, transferring photos from your camera that way, or if you do projects with Raspberry Pis, I know some 3D printers use them. So really cool for a lot of creative applications. And then also if you do networking stuff, uh, this is a really big one, I'd love to have this for work, um, is the ethernet port. So full size ethernet port that is, uh, it's not even like the one that's on a hinge where those can break. So that's a really nice feature to have if you play around with networking applications because sometimes you just have to go hardwired. So one area that has been a little bit disappointing on the T490 is the battery life. I've only been getting really about four and a half to five hours, which is lower than I would expect. And as I've said, if you've watched any of my other laptop reviews, I'm pretty aggressive cranking up the brightness. So I feel like that's probably part of the reason. Um, and also this does have a relatively small battery. It's only 50 watt hours total. The X1 Carbon is 53. And the one that I'm using right now, the X1 Carbon just has the 1080p, so just the full HD display, which is only like 300 nits. So that's a lot more power efficient right there as well. But yeah, so I don't know if the main culprit is the screen and the brightness being cranked up all the way, um, or if it's that sm slightly smaller battery, but I've been pretty disappointed in the battery life. And, you know, it's not terrible, you know, five hours is pretty good, and I'm sure if I turn the brightness down some, which a lot of people do anyway, um, just out of like habit, then I'm sure I'd be getting better battery life. But, but yeah, I would expect the way I've been using it to get more like six hours. So pretty disappointing that I'm only getting four and a half to five. Okay, well the touchpad and the keyboard on the X1, or sorry, on the T490 are pretty darn good. So the touchpad is not glass like the one on the X1 Carbon, so that's one downside. But other than that, it's actually a really good touchpad. The click is a little bit stiff, so I wish it was a little bit easier when you're doing the push to click. Um, but other than that, the tracking is really good. One thing I will note on the touchpad is that it is the type that you have to sort of break it in for a day before it starts to feel really good that there's sort of, it's like there's a little bit of rough plastic finish on it, but after about a day of usage, that goes away and it starts to feel pretty good. Um, so trackpad is good. Keyboard, this is an excellent specimen of a ThinkPad keyboard. It's got deeper travel than the 7th Gen X1 Carbon. So it's just, a, it's a very luscious typing experience and this is a really nice keyboard. It does have the two stages of backlighting, which is normal across the ThinkPad line. So yeah, awesome keyboard. Uh, really good, but not excellent trackpad. 
And, and yeah, and this trackpad is not going to be anywhere close to as good as like a MacBook, but it's not, I think, really a, a downgrade. It's not like a major downside, really. It is a downgrade, but not a huge like negative, a huge disadvantage. So it's a good trackpad. It's fine. All right, so if we talk about the speakers on the T490, um, compared to almost any ThinkPad that's older than this, they are very good. They get really loud. They have, you know, decent range in the mids, the highs, the lows. Um, you know, it's all there, so you can actually listen to music, and it sounds okay. You can watch movies on this, and some older ThinkPads, you can actually have trouble getting the volume high enough sometimes to hear everything going on. Not the case here. It gets plenty loud. Um, so you could, these are pretty good speakers by ThinkPad standards. Uh, this is another area where I, where I will compare them to the 7th Gen X1 Carbon, which was actually a huge upgrade for ThinkPad speakers. I think this whole generation, they decided to take speakers seriously. And while the speakers on the T490 aren't quite as good, there are actually two extra speakers on the X1. They're not that much worse once you get further away. So the X1s, you get more of a sound stage where you get that separation when you're listening which is nice, um, and you get, I think, a little more detail, especially in the highs on the X1, but outside of those situations, and if you are if you move like more than a couple feet away from the laptop, they actually sound really similar. So uh, these aren't great speakers by any means. Again, it's kind of like the touchpad, where these are good enough that they're not an issue. All right, so if we talk about performance and upgradability, uh, this does have, like I said, the 8th Gen i7-8665, and I've noticed that in long, heavy loads, it tends to max out around 2.8 gigahertz, and that's sort of where its thermal limit is, where it's you know running at 90 degrees that whole time, but it can maintain around 2.8 gigahertz, which is not bad for this era in a relatively thin and light laptop. Um, I've noticed on X1s, it's usually more around 2.4 to 2.5, so those are all technically boosts, so hey, that's pretty good. And like I said, this does come with soldered RAM. Mine came with 16 gigs. Some will only come with eight. So if you're looking at a T490, that's important to take note of if you want to upgrade this beyond 16 gigs total. Um, so, or beyond, I guess, 20, uh, if you did eight plus 16 or 24. Sorry, math is hard sometimes. Um, but yeah, so it's cool that there is that RAM slot so you can add extra RAM. I have mine running with 32 gigs of RAM. Honestly, I haven't really done anything on it that would require 32 gigs of RAM. And most of what I would do, which is like having Photoshop and Premiere running and doing a bunch of stuff at the same time, would honestly not run that great on this laptop anyway, regardless of how much RAM. So it's overkill. Um, but if you do, if you're like a developer um, and you use a lot of virtual machines, or you have another reason to use a lot of virtual machines, or just any like really RAM heavy task where you don't necessarily need that much CPU or GPU power, um, that extra RAM can be a really nice bonus. Also great that you can buy one with eight, eight gigs and upgrade it to 16 gigs. That's like another really awesome just benefit of having that RAM slot. So beyond the RAM, uh, if we talk about performance, it's fine for everyday usage. You know, Excel, uh, Photoshop is, is even fine in here if you're not doing like gigantic files with tons of layers, but more power will always help. Um, video editing is definitely doable on this. Um, if you're doing 4K and you're stacking lots of effects and layers, you know, you're going to have a tough time. Also, you're not really going to be running previews in 4K and Premiere, but video editing's doable. Um, if you're willing to, you know, be patient and understand that there are much better options out there for theirs, out there for that experience. So the RAM definitely can help there. Um, but yeah, it's obviously not going to be optimal for that, but it's doable. Um, and also the SD card slot or the micro SD card slot makes a big difference if you do want to use it for a purpose like that. And having the screen, that HDR screen, makes this actually a really viable photo um, editing machine. And, and in a pinch for video editing or for light video editing. One thing I will also note on the upgradability is that the, while the SSD is upgradable because it's a standard M.2 SSD slot, if you have an SSD that has memory on both sides, so double-sided M.2 SSD, it is not going to fit. The slot they use is very close to the PCB of the motherboard. So you actually, you know, you'll get a very, a not good flex of the SSD if you try to put a double-sided SSD in there, which a lot of two terabyte SSDs are. I have it in my desktop, a Corsair MP510, and I checked that in the T490, and yeah, it did not 
really fit in a way that I would be comfortable using it for a long period of time. Okay, so let's talk about heat and noise. Um, really, it's not bad on the T490. If you are pounding it, um, it really depends how you have it set because Lenovo has their three different power settings. If you have it on the medium setting, you'll, you'll hear the fan a little bit, but it's not gonna get super loud. If you do have it all the way up in the high performance mode, then it will be pretty noticeable, but like a lot of fans on higher end laptops, it doesn't have like a really annoying whining sound, so it's actually not too bad. In terms of heat, you will feel the chassis heat up some, but it's, it hasn't, at least for me, and I haven't pushed it super hard, but I haven't had it get to a point where it's uncomfortable to use it all. But like I said, you will feel it get warm. So um, yeah, it seems to handle thermal performance pretty well uh, for, for what it's working with. Okay, so I guess that really leaves me to make some conclusions on the T490. And I'm not sure that I would necessarily recommend this exact specification of it with the HDR screen. It is really nice, and if you want that Ethernet port, then it's a really good option. But I feel like if you're buying a high-end spec of this, I would, you know, the, just some of the quality of life improvements on the X1 Carbon, like the glass trackpad, the better speakers, um, the fact the more rigid feel, which is nice on a day-to-day -day basis, all of those would make me feel really tempted to, to splurge on an X1 Carbon if I were going to buy a really high-end spec of this. The T490, obviously, you know, outside of having the extra ports, which is does make sense in a higher-end spec if you want something that has those ports, um, it does also make a lot of sense if you're thinking about a lower-end spec, where it's something that comes with 8 gigs of RAM that you can upgrade to 16 gigs later. Um, or if you do just want an Ultrabook, that's you know not going to break the bank like a brand new one where they're starting to put 32 gigs in where you can buy this with 16 gigs add it to 32 because you need that ram uh, even though you don't necessarily need a more powerful h series cpu so yeah the t490 it's a, a really nice laptop it is a thinkpad unfortunately there are some disappointments in the build quality and the battery life but there's definitely still plenty there to like if this is a laptop that's in your price range and offers the types of features and upgradability that you need. If you have any questions, let me know and I will do my best to get you an answer. Thanks for watching.